l'onorevole Giorgia Meloni, Presidente del Consiglio dei Ministri. On October 22nd, Giorgia Meloni was sworn in as the Prime Minister of Italy and in the following days her government won the two mandatory votes of confidence in Parliament. Meloni leads a far-right-wing coalition that comprises her brothers of Italy party, the League and Forza Italia. There has been a lot of attention paid to Meloni and her agenda ever since the coalition achieved a significant electoral victory. Meloni's party, which is the leading force in the coalition, has its roots in fascism and many of her campaign statements and proposals have been met with alarm and opposition. What has been Meloni's record since winning the election? What does the composition of the new government tell us? Maurizio Coppola of the leftist political party, Power to the People, explains. Yeah, in general, she confirmed the line she already announced during the, the electoral campaign. So, so she confirmed her visions on uh, gender questions, on uh, social rights, civil rights questions for uh, immigrants and so on. So a very uh, repressive, conservative position. Uh, she uh, also confirmed like the, 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 the views and the program she presented during the electoral campaign concerning uh, social rights for workers. So the idea of abolishing the social assistance for poor people, the idea of not introducing a minimum wage, and uh, above all, she also confirmed her position uh, that is like following the line of Mario Draghi, the former prime minister, uh, in the questions of war, of NATO and of, um, of the European Union. So she is not putting in question the uh, situation, the position of Italy in the European Union, in the sense that she does not want to exit the European Union. She wants to reinforce the position of Italy in the European Union. Uh, so this is a very national also uh, program point she has. Uh, she does not want to exit NATO or not to invest in, uh, in this war economy uh, in countries. She is like uh, affirming that the territory of Ukraine, uh, so she's taking position for Ukraine and so also for the uh, rearmament of the conflict in Ukraine. So what she did in this last, uh, in this last month before she was like introduced uh, from the parliament in her position as Prime Minister, confirmed the line uh, that she already had during the electoral campaign. And what she did now with the new ministries and the new ministers also is something that is also confirming and reinforcing this uh, ultra-conservative, this uh, nostalgia of fascism and so on. Um, only a, a couple of, of uh, examples to uh, illustrate this thing. It's uh, the names of the ministries. It's very interesting how she transformed uh, the names of the ministries. For example, we had the Ministry of Equal Opportunity. It's a question of, uh, of, uh, of gender relations, of uh, equality among gender, among, uh, among the people. She added on the name of this ministry, uh, the, that's the Ministry of Equal Opportunity, Natality and Family. So this kind of uh, idea that the family, it's the, 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 the Catholic, the Christian uh, family, it's the, the nucleus of the society. Uh, the Ministry of Education, is now called education and merit. So also there, what, uh, what uh, uh, the meritocracy is a concept that she's very defending and putting forward. And that is also like illustrated in the name of the ministry. There are others, for example, the last one I will quote, it's uh, uh, the Ministry of Economic Development uh, now is, has been transformed in the Ministry of Companies and Made in Italy. So there is even an English uh, uh, concept inside of the name of the ministry. Also, the uh, the choice of the minister of the ministers is very interesting. The new defense minister uh, Guido Corsetto. He was a businessman of the arms industry uh, the day before he was elected as a ministry minister. Uh, the Minister of uh, Tourism, Daniela Santanque, also coming for a very, from a very uh, neo-fascist uh, tradition. She's an owner of a private beach uh, in, in Italy. So the composition of the new uh, uh, government uh, confirms like that, the, uh, that uh, Fratelli d'Italia and the new government, the center-right government, uh, has a continuity with uh, the business in Italy, has a continuity with the conservative positions, and so on and so on. In response to the new government, the Italian left trade unions and progressive organizations are taking to the streets. On October 22nd, these groups protested in the city of Bologna, highlighting a number of issues including the climate crisis, the cost of living crisis, persecution of workers, imperialist wars, 
rise in fascism and unscientific development. What are the key issues the left plans to raise in the coming period and what sections do they seek to mobilize? There are two different areas of, uh, of intervention of the left. Of course, the, the demonstrations and the protests organized in Bologna for October 22 uh, was a huge success. I think the participation above all of younger people uh, was very important. Uh, they gathered like 20, 25,000 people in Bologna. They, they, were, they were able, it, the call came from a, from a factory uh, collective of uh, GKN, uh, who uh, lived like the, the, the people there, the workers that were fired in 2021. This collective is st still struggling for defending their workplaces. And they called also for the uh, mobilization involving all social categories, so students, also uh, uh, um, environmental uh, organizations and so on to defend our standard of living, uh, to defend our jobs. So this is a very important, this was a very important mobilization and it will be uh, uh, again in November 5 in Naples, uh, it will be organized. At the same time, in November 5, in Rome, there will be a huge demonstration against war. So against the war economy, Italy is uh, pushing forward. And this is also like a, a huge, uh, uh, I have the opinion, a huge topic for, uh, of course, for Giorgia Maloney. In her speech yesterday, she also uh, highlighted this problem that, I mean, the, all the promises she made, all the, 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 the political program points she has, uh, they, uh, she's risking not to be able to implement these reforms and so on, because there is like a very economic also uh, complicated situation for Italy, like increasing cost of living, the question of salaries, the question also of the public debt, because as she needs money from uh, the, the banks to, um, to, to finance the programs for, uh, for the people and to, pro to finance the, uh, the, the, the war. And this is like, uh, how can she deal with increasing debt? The European Union will not accept an increasing debt. Italy, we remember it's uh, with Greece together, one of the, uh, has one of the highest debt in, in the European Union. So there are like uh, mobilizations that are targeting this kind of topics the government is now has to face now. Uh, I also remember that in, in December 2nd, there will be a general strike called by the grassroots unions. So there are different uh, places, sectors organizing, mobilizing, calling for mobilizations. What is missing is the unity of, this mo of these mobilizations, of these movements. And this is a topic that will be uh, central in the next uh, uh, weeks and in the next months in Italy. I remember also yesterday was the, uh, Giorgio Leone was like presented in the parliament, the parliament uh, confirmed uh, that she will be prime minister uh, for the next five years. In the same moment at different universities in Italy, uh, protests started. So also the youth, the university students are protesting above all in Rome, at La Sapienza, it's the Central University of Rome, where Fratelli d'Italia, the party of um, Giorgio Meloni, uh, had a, a, a meeting in the, in the spaces of the university. The students protested. They said, we do not accept that Fratelli d'Italia will have a meeting there about how good capitalism is uh, functioning. And the police blocked them, uh, uh, beat them. They couldn't enter the university. And this is like the first day of the new government. So we also see what is going on. And today, the day after, uh, the, the, the students were occupying in different uh, universities. So there is like this, uh, this uh, social uh, rage that in a way is been, uh, has been expressed in the last days. And uh, as I said, and I repeat, the importance is now to work on the unity uh, of these movements because like uh, we know divided we are nothing we cannot face a, a strong uh, enemy as uh, the government the italian government today we have to build this unity in a way to change the situation also politically in the institutions